Welcome to The Burnout, where we help teachers and education professionals recharge their purpose, revise their passion, and regain their power. The show where we tackle the problems in education, one solution at a time. I'm your host, Kendria Johnson, and we look forward to helping you beat the burnout. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Burnout, where we help good teachers become great by bringing them out of burnout back into a balanced life. I am your host, Ms. Kendria Johnson, and today on the show, I have a very good friend. It's going to be, it's going to take everything in my, in my power not to interrupt her when she's talking, but <laughs> I'm going to, I have my good, very good friend, Ms. Kiana Moore, Coach Moore. When I met her some years ago, I can't even tell you how many years that was ago, but um, uh, we have Coach Moore. She is an educator like myself. We, we hail from the same city and we've been friends for a long time. She's also a global educator, just like me. She's she's taught in the Middle East, just like myself. And she's going to share her thoughts today. First, she's going to introduce herself. Then she's going to share her thoughts today about what we think is happening in the world of education. Welcome, welcome, Miss Moore. You're Miss Moore today. Thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. And as Kendria stated, I uh, I've worn a lot of hats. I've been Coach Moore. I've been Miss Moore. I've been uh, a number of things uh, within the scope of education. I am currently Miss C um, with Urban Digs, okay. uh, which means I primarily. Uh, <laughs> I let kids have fun in the dirt. If let, let's just say, we we get into worms, we get into the earth, we get into dirt, plants, nature, and th just things of that nature. Okay. So we have a lot of fun these days. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, just reflecting upon education mm -hmm. itself, yes, there 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 is a problem. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the solution. Okay. Let's definitely talk about a solution. Okay. Um. Let's look at revamping traditional education, if you will, as we know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the world has revamped. We, we've come into a technology society. We've, you know, we're going into metaverse. We're doing all sorts of things. However, I think education, again, as we know it, has stood still. Mm -hmm. And it's time for us to play catch up. Mm -hmm. It is definitely time for us to play catch up. Uh, and in my opinion, that looks like um, not necessarily j just academics, mm -hmm. but it looks like mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, in uh, this month is mental health awareness. Yes. So we definitely have to take a look at that. That That's a, a component, a vital component that we cannot leave out as it pertains to our children. Our children are having... Um, they face so many difficulties. Um, mm -hmm. They're dealing with, you know, mass shootings yes. and just a number, just an array of things around the globe. And we have failed to address the mental aspect of what's going on in their world. Mm -hmm. Their world is very much different from my world as maybe a, a third grader or a fifth grader or a 10th mm -hmm. grader. It looks very different. They're dealing with very different things. So I think education as a whole, we've got to transition. We've got to make um, a, a transition to address the issues that they are currently facing. Right. So to me, that looks like a, a total overhaul in education. Like I said, starting with mental health, that, that would be a great place to start. I agree. Yeah. I would agree. I could not agree more. And you said something very, very key. You said something like it's, it's, you know, I'm going to re-paraphrase what you said. It's basically we're trying to put, you know, new wine in an old bottle. We're still trying to put that square peg in a round hole and it's just not going to fit. And we're saying it in the news. We're saying it with the teacher shortages. We're saying it with the school shootings. We're saying it, but no one's listening. So I want you yeah. to talk about, uh, let's just pretend a year from now, someone sees this, a politician, let's say, uh, a newsmaker, a uh, um, uh, a thought leader, uh, a superintendent, someone who actually makes decisions for us, that, that makes decisions for teachers and schools and so on and so forth. What would you tell them? And I want you to talk as long as you can. <laughs> what would you say to this person and, and give them a comprehensive plan about what we can do to fix this thing? Because, I mean, I have my thoughts, but I want to definitely hear what you have to say because we've talked about this. So let, let's, let's, let's put it out in the universe. Go ahead. 
of course. Give very serious thought. If I had the opportunity to to sit down with a a, a change maker, uh, policy holders, mm-hmm. I would venture to tell them, hey, grab boots on the ground, grab those people who do it every single day in and out. Have a conversation with those people. Mm-hmm. Bring them in. They are your experts. Sit them down at the table. Sit them down at the table and have very candid conversations with them about what it's going to take to change and revamp education as we know it. And they'll tell you because they live it every day. They walk it every day. They see our children every day. You know, boots on the ground. It's it's kind of funny because it seems uh, in most of our um, systems throughout the world, everything is top down. When honestly, I think it should be bottom up. Yeah. You should start at the bottom, yeah. talk to the people on the bottom, mm. and they send that information up. Mm. Mm-hmm. Life will be, I mean, it, it's a no-brainer to me. Mm-hmm. It just it just makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. But uh, obviously I'm I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not a policymaker. I don't make out, you know, I don't make the decisions, but yeah, talk to the people who literally do it every day, who who they're there. Mm-hmm. They witness you know, the meltdowns that the children have. They they witness the anxiety of the children as a result of, you know, whatever. They the, This whole standardized testing situation. Oh. Yeah. All of these things, they witness it on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are your experts. Yeah. I, are your I, experts. Could not, I could not agree more. Just, I, was trying, I was trying not to say amen, preach. But yes, yes, I agree. Because, you know, if the stories that you and I have told each other, if we were to tell those stories on this podcast, people would turn off because say they lying and they're making that up. No, no, no. We're not making yeah. that, those things up. We're not making those things up. Sorry. The things that we have seen are comparable to, comparable to people who have seen warfare. The mindset of these children that we we taught, the mindset of the, the parents of the children that we taught, is almost like we're going to war every single day. Who and what can sustain that way? You talk about mental health month. Who can whose mental health can sustain that? I think I'm a strong sister. I know you are. But even I, as the strong person, the reason why I wrote this book was because I couldn't take it. There was years where I just couldn't take it anymore. I just could not take it. So so change makers, people that make decisions. Did you hear what my friend said? Did you hear what what, what, Ms. Moore, what C said? That we bit. need to, we need to yeah. talk to us. <laughs> If you don't talk to us, fine. Talk to some teachers who have left the profession. Exactly. Talk to some people who have walked out on teaching. Talk to those people and they will tell you, they will give you a plethora of reasons. The same thing we're talking about here. And it could be something just as simple as, and I'm going to let you go back to uh, some of your points or key points, but it could be something as simple as flexible work hours for teachers. Stop holding us hostage all day. When I'm done with my work, I want to go home and I can work from home. That's what we do. That's just what we do. I'm putting in 40. I'm putting in 50, actually. So I don't have to do that at school if I don't want to. Let me have a mental break from the from the from the building, at least something that small, just itty bitty things, itty bitty things. So I'm going to go ahead and let you pontificate with another question. Think about this one. I want you to think about this one. Okay. you are principal. C. what does your school look like and go? Oh, wow. (laughs) You know, principalship is headship. And headship creates the atmosphere for everything that flows that comes after it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm really thinking leadership, headship, principalship. There has to be, in my building, principal C's building in my world. Mm -hmm. There has to be a, a feeling and an atmosphere of one. It has to flow. And when I say it has to flow, there's an openness about it. Mm-hmm. It's not stifling. It's not, um, you know, the, the old adage, if you do what you love, it's not considered work. Yes. I would love for educators to be able to go to work and it not be considered work because they love what they do. Mm-hmm. Because the atmosphere that they're in has been created to such a degree that they actually enjoy they love they're passionate about what they do can we bring that back mm-hmm. i'd like to bring passion into principal c's school mm-hmm. 
a, a genuine love for education, not for not for the red tape, not for bureaucracy, not for politics, but just genuine education and love of children. Yes. I would start with that. That would be my nucleus. Mm -hmm. That would be the nucleus. And I, and I feel like everything from that would just, just filter out. It, it would definitely take care of itself. If, if I were to create, if I'm able to create an atmosphere to give my teachers the uh, autonomy mm. to teach, just trust their level of professionalism mm -hmm. and that they're going to do what's in the best interest of the student and just step back and let them do that. And if and when they need assistance or need tools, be there for them to offer that assistance in those tools, that would be a, a happy place. Again, okay. minus all of the politics, minus all of the red tape, minus all of, you know. Yep. Yeah. If we kept the main thing, the main thing, if it was, if it stayed about the children, if yes. we could just get it to stay there, things would be great. I agree. I would agree 100%. And I would love to teach at your school as, as I'm yeah. sure it's vice versa. I would love to yeah. teach at your school. Yeah. Because we get it. I would create an we, educator we, we utopia. It. We get a, it. A educator utopia. Mm -hmm. If you need a moment, step out. There's someone to assist you. Yeah. You've got back up. You know, it's it's it wouldn't take an act of Congress. You know, when <laughs> when you have to be out a couple of days, you've you've got. I mean, it's almost as if, okay, I've got to write this, I've got to call this in, I've got to do this, I've got to mm -hmm. do. No, if you need to step away, step away. Exactly. And you feel okay stepping away. You know, your children are going to be in good hands. Mm -hmm. You know, because life is presenting itself to everyone. It is. It shows up it's unannounced too. It shows like, up unannounced. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hi, I'm life. <laughs> hey, hello. Hey, I know what you was planning, but here I hello life. Here I am. <laughs> so it would be great for teachers to to feel that they are supported. Yes. Rather than made to feel like uh, it's a dreadful thing when you have to step away, or you know, you're busy trying to manage life, but you're also in the back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, what's going on? And, you know, mm -hmm. that's not, yeah. So, you know, before we wrap up today, I, I want to pick your brain about this. And I've asked a couple of my guests this, but I want to ask you for sure, because, you know, I know I know you. But, you know, this this podcast is about beating the burnout, of course, talking about the burnout, solutions to the burnout. Talk about some of your self-care routines, because the system is not going to change overnight. I'm going to go to work tomorrow and it's going to be the same foolishness it was today. But, you know, I have done things differently. You have done things differently. Talk about, you know, let's talk about why you're out in that sun right now. Tell about why you're outside right now. Talk about those things that you do. I love to hear some of your thoughts on that. Teach us. Teach us. So think about a teacher who's going through something that we've gone through already. Bring them out. Yes. Find <laughs> something that grounds you. It turns out that nature grounds me. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background, mm -hmm. but I'm literally sitting outside. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I elect to start my days mm -hmm. in nature. Mm -hmm. That's And it's free therapy. Yeah. It's free therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, to just be able to, first of all, the sensory perception of it all to hear the birds mm -hmm. to see the squirrels to see the trees the blue sky when i when i look up find something that grounds you um like i said for me it's nature mm -hmm. it's a, a 10 minute walk mm -hmm. to, to decompress mm -hmm. decompress it's putting the phone away yes getting away from so much screen time it's closing the laptop and putting the phone down. And just take a walk. Take a brisk walk without regards or answering an email or being concerned about a missed call. Mm -hmm. Like, tune in to life without being connected, like I said, to maybe an electronic device or, you know, having that, that anxiousness of, oh, I've got to answer this email or I've got to make mm -hmm. this call or I've got to do this. No, you have to take time for you. That's a mandate. You should. I hope y'all wrote that down. <laughs> I hope you wrote that down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're your greatest investment. We are. We are. And then the and, and all this this talk about self-care. Nothing that you just said costs money. Not Nothing. a dime. 
do nothing that you, the spa is great. It, the spa is great, but right now I don't have you know time or money for a spa. But there's a balcony out there, and there's a sun out there. Exactly, exactly. I love it. I love everything you just said. Is, is there any? But as we close, Miss Moore, Coach Moore, Coach C, Miss C, <laughs> or as right, I like to call you, right. Kiana, Kiana, what parting wisdom would you would you would you want to impart to the viewers before we close and wrap up? Do what you love and love what you do. Mm. And if doing what you love means that you need to make an adjustment, make that adjustment so that yeah. you can continue to do what you love. So doing what you love doesn't become um, a weight. Yes. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to become a weight. You started because you loved it. You enjoyed it. You were passionate about it. Keep the keep the passion and the joy in what you're doing. And and that could very well mean along that journey, finding ways to take care of you mm -hmm. as you go along. Taking Perfect. care of you. Go along. Perfect. So, you, yeah. you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Now, if did you, or do you have anything coming up that you want to share with the people, or you have a way for they for them to get in contact with you? Let's say they wanted to, you they say they say they need your help as a wellness coach. Okay, how would oh. they get in contact with you? <laughs> well, actually, uh, they could reach me. They could email me at Urban Diggs, um, Urban D U R B A N D I G Z, Z as in zebra dot mm -hmm. com. Okay. Um, that is my current venture. And I'm, I'm, again, I made the adjustment. Mm -hmm. Loving what I do and doing what I love. I'm passionate about children. I enjoy children. I just made a shift from the classroom into the garden. Yeah. And I'm still able to do what I love. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So you heard it here first. See, we kept it. We kept it very professional. You know, Absolutely. We've been friends forever. We've been friends forever. <laughs> we raised our kids together. But I, that's going to do it for us. And I appreciate you coming on and spending time on the burnout with us. Remember, this is the show where we help teachers recharge their passion and redefine yes. their purpose. And thank you for having me. Yes. I really appreciate it. It's thank you. That's going to do it. Take care. Us. All right. Bye-bye.